Hi, I don't want to waste your time. I just want to prove a very simple point. Traditionally, what I've seen is there seem to be two camps of people. On one hand, you've got people who are saying, ChatGPT writes all my code for me and it works, it checks out perfectly, it runs, there's no errors, and so I'm going to use ChatGPT to do my assignments. On the other hand, you've got this other camp of people who are saying, hold on, how on earth could you do that? That is so unethical. I'm keeping my distance from Chat GPT because I couldn't touch or use code that is not my own. So you've got these two extremes. What I'm trying to say is it doesn't have to be this way. Let me suggest a very interesting middle ground. Come here, let me show you something. I'm going to enter a prompt into ChatGPT that asks it to write a Python program for a particular application. Here's the prompt. You can pause the video and go through it. So let's just look at the code here. I'm going to copy this code, paste it into ChatGPT. So I'm going to paste it into Python, sorry. I'm not going to be too technical about this because what this is basically doing is creating a function that predicts the next number. Now let's pretend I know nothing about this function. I'm completely new hell? to this kind of math. How do I wrap my head around this such that if someone asks me about this code, I can fully and confidently explain what this function is doing. That instead of power being generated by the relative motion of conductors and fluxes, it's produced by the modial interaction of magneto-reluctance and capacitive directance. i tell you how. Our old friend, Chad GPT, I've designed a prompt asking, can you explain the code to me line by line? I am unfamiliar with mathematics. I would like to understand the gist of each line and the functions used such that I will confidently be able to explain it to somebody else. In fact, we can make it better by saying, if possible, use simple but appropriate analogies to explain what each function is doing. Asking ChatGPT to use an analogy has really, really sped up the rate of understanding for me. As you can see, ChatGPT is doing a good job of explaining this to you. I have a feeling once you've read this properly once, twice, you're going to be much better off explaining this to someone if they ask you about your code. In fact, one thing I often do outside of academics usually is place my windows like this. I'll remove all the code and I'll try and type down the function manually by hand. Really getting in and writing the code yourself is very helpful in my experience if you want to understand something ChatGPT has blurted out. But here's the catch. All of this assumes that you don't understand what chat GPT has put in front of you. If it shows you some functions in Python that you already knew, for example, you already know it. You don't need to worry about understanding it because you already do. In which case you can just ask it to copy the code, explore GPTs and click on doc strings. Python or something like that. Here we have a GPT model catered to doc strings. So if you want to add text to your code explaining what it does, voila, hey chat GPT, can you add concise doc strings to this code for each function? Searching my knowledge. Do you feel like that during your exams? Or is that just me? So here you have text in your code that explains the input and output of the function, which not just you, but also anyone else looking at your code can read and understand what's going on. Because often when we write code, what happens is we have something in mind and we show it to someone else. They don't have our context. And so it might look weird to them. They might have trouble wrapping their heads around it because they're not us. But okay, you've added doc strings to your code and you've done all that stuff. You've understood your code. You've typed it down yourself. Is it even ethical to do this. Now getting into the ethics of this is not within the scope of this video, but to put things into perspective, you are putting in effort as well. You're learning something new. So those are some benefits of using chat GPT to code the right way. You're growing your knowledge base. You're also getting your work done quickly and you'll be confidently able to explain your code to somebody else should they ask you about it. This is what I would call the middle ground between the two extremes of mindlessly using chat GPT and being scared of using chat GPT because it's, it just feels wrong.
Now, everyone's gonna have a different take on the subject. Do you feel differently? Do you think that using ChatGPT is wrong inherently? What do you think? Do you think there's better ways to use ChatGPT than what I mentioned? Please share it down below. I'd love to learn more from the community who watches this video. And if you found it useful, that's really all that matters to me. Thank you for watching and um, I'll catch you in the next show. Until then, good luck and happy coding.